Hello and welcome to House News. In this episode, we present you the latest information coming from the House of Representatives of Indonesia. And now, let's see the headlines for today. Mega Sape of the House held a friendly talk with a representative of German Parliament to discuss women's and youth issues, the economy, and the European Initiated Deforestation Policy. Indonesia and South Korea are strengthening bilateral relations in various ways. The deputy head of mission of the Republic of Korea to Indonesia hopes Indonesia can serve as a bridge for peace on the Korean Peninsula. The Chilean ambassador visited the house for the first time during the 2024 to 2029 term. There is hope for a stronger trade partnership in food, energy, and mining. President Prabowo acknowledged his cabinet is the largest in Indonesia's history, comprising over 100 ministries, deputy ministries, and heads of the state agencies. Marina Development Indonesia and Pelindo have announced the start of construction for Indonesia's first international standard full-service yacht marina. Bekasape of the House received a visit from the German Parliamentary Friendship Group. The meeting discussed several global issues on child and women's welfare, youth development, and economic matters. Chairperson of BKSAP of the House, Mardani, welcomed the German parliamentary representative's visit, considering it as a valuable step towards strengthening bilateral relations between Indonesia and Germany. Mardani supported sustainable projects with Germany, especially for Indonesia's palm oil industry. He raised concerns the European deforestation regulation might harm palm oil farmers by limiting exports. Therefore, he emphasized the need for cooperation to help farmers adapt to the new rules without suffering negative impacts. Mardali hoped the cooperation between Indonesia and Germany would continue to strengthen and become more inclusive. Tujuannya dua, ingin meningkatkan kerjasama bilateral dengan Indonesia khususnya dan juga uh, mengajak uh, Frederick Siftung, uh, Yayasan Frederick Siftung yang uh, banyak bergerak Uh, membangun demokrasi di akar rumput. Jadi tadi berbincang hampir satu jam dan banyak sekali mulai dari women, uh, perempuan, anak muda, uh, economic development, pembangunan ekonomi, sampai ke uh, ada yang menarik. Mereka tuh punya plan internasional. NGO-nya Jerman yang dia salah satu membernya uh, melakukan uh, supervisi, advokasi, bahkan edukasi di uh, Pengungsi Myanmar yang hampir satu juta orang. Additionally, BKSAP is committed to helping address the demand for healthcare workers in Germany. The support includes participating in programs such as the Triple Win program and the international class initiative proposed by Indonesia's Ministries of Health and Minister of Manpower. Andini N. Gunarso, TVR Parliament, report. Because Ape of the House received a visit from the South Korean ambassador to discuss cooperation in education and culture. The ambassador also requests Indonesia's support in promoting peace between South and North Korea. Recently, tensions between South Korea and North Korea have increased, especially after North Korea destroyed a road connecting the two countries. Vice Chairperson of the Kaisapi of the House, Muhammad Hussein Fadullah, stated, To reduce this tension, Indonesia needs to encourage communication with North Korea. In addition to discussing peace, the meeting also addressed strengthening educational and cultural cooperation as South Korea has provided many scholarships to Indonesian students and created job opportunities for Indonesian migrant workers. Bagaimana kita untuk bisa terus menguatkan uh, hubungan antar dua negara ini ya melalui banyak hal tadi disebutkan perjanjian perdagangan melalui uh, kebudayaan di satu sisi juga Korea Selatan uh, meminta bagaimana kita juga Indonesia bisa menjadi jembatan ya, men- jembatan perdamaian antara Korea Utara dan juga Korea Selatan agar bisa berkomunikasi uh, kepada Korea Utara juga uh, untuk bisa menciptakan situasi yang damai aman dan juga terkendali karena itu adalah untuk kepentingan negara-negara di Asia dan juga ASEAN dan tentunya itu juga bagi negara-negara di internasional nantinya ke depan. Furthermore, South Korean ambassador also invited BKSAP of the House to attend the human rights conferences in South Korea in November 2024.
Panji Prabowo and Shamsul, TVR Parliament, report. During the Chilean ambassador's visit to Indonesia, because of, of the House hope for a more strategic partnership, they aim to strengthen Indonesia's international role and explore new opportunities for collaboration in multiple sectors. The 59-year relationship between the Indonesian and Chilean parliaments is expected to lead to more cooperation with other Latin American countries. Member of the KSAP of the House Gilang Dila Farares point out the growing challenges in global conditions and a rising population affecting both countries. Therefore, he encouraged strengthening cooperation, especially in the food and energy sectors, to overcome these challenges. Dengan adanya uh, kunjungan pertama ini, uh, hubungan Indonesia dan Chile semakin dekat, tapi tentunya ini bisa menjadi salah satu hub dari Indonesia ke depan uh, dengan bertambahnya jumlah orang. Artinya uh, makanan food security adalah satu tantangannya ke depan dan juga energi. Dengan adanya pertemuan ini, hubungan bilateral antara Indonesia dan juga Chile ini bisa semakin erat dan juga bisa menjadi teman strategis ke depannya. Saya tadi juga dijelaskan dari uh, beliau, bahwa ada banyak warga negara Chile yang kerja di Indonesia, salah satunya di sektor uh, tambang yang kerja di Freeport. Furthermore, Gilang hope for a more open relationship between Indonesia and Chile, focusing on regional conflicts like the Palestine-Israel issue. He noted that Chile has the largest Palestinian community outside the Arab world with about 500,000 Palestinian immigrants. The shared perspective on the Palestinian conflict could strengthen the relationship between the two countries. Adila and Rian, TVR Parliament, report. After the break, we bring you the latest from Commission 9 of the House, only on House News. The State Financial Accountability Committee suggests increasing the number of ministries could help the government focus more effectively on its goals, leading to better progress in priority areas. Vice Chairperson of the State Financial Accountability Committee or BAKN of the House, Herman Hayron, explained reorganizing the cabinet was necessary because of the wide range of tasks and the large resources each ministry managed. He said this is part of the government's effort to improve its governance system. Dipecah itu karena memang tupoksinya terlalu luas dan kemudian terkait dengan sumber daya yang uh, yang besar gitu ya. Oleh karenanya ya pemecahan ini kan memang supaya lebih fokus gitu. Misalkan contoh Kementerian Hukum dan HAM dipecah menjadi Kementerian Hukum, Kementerian HAM dan Kementerian Imigrasi Pemasarakatan. Ini tentu akan lebih fokus untuk uh, membinanya masing-masing. Misalkan imigrasi dan pemasarakatan akan fokus bagaimana membangun sebuah sistem yang tentu ini juga akan lebih baik ke depan. Jadi menurut saya memang ada, ada keinginan besar, baik dari pemerintah maupun di DPR, kita ingin ke depan bahwa fokusing untuk mencapai tujuan itu bisa sama-sama dicapai. Apakah tujuan di pemerintah maupun tujuan di DPR tentu sama-sama nanti akan uh, lebih fokus untuk mencapai tujuan. President Prabowo Subianto increased the size of his cabinet, which is now the largest ever in Indonesia. He recently appointed 136 individuals, including ministers, deputy ministers, agency leaders, and special representatives. TVR Parliament team report. Commission 9 of the House held a meeting with Deputy Speaker for People Welfare to outline important issues and prioritize to be addressed in the 2024 to 2029 term, focusing on improving welfare initiative. Chairperson of Commission 9 of the House, Feli Estelita Runtuwene, emphasized health issues need more attention from the government, especially regarding the uneven quality of health services. She pointed out people in remote areas face difficulties in accessing quality health care. Therefore, the House must monitor the government efforts to ensure a balance between the quality of human resources and infrastructure in the health sector. Medical facilities and personnel should be accessible to people in large cities and remote areas. 
uh, poin yang di garis dibawahi tentunya kami menyesuaikan dengan program Pak Presiden uh, Prabowo Subianto. Jadi tentunya ada yang harus dirubah yang kemarin penetapan kemarin yang tidak sesuai ya, ada yang tidak sesuai dengan uh, keinginan dari Bapak Presiden Prabowo Subianto dan ini kita harus selesaikan karena ada beberapa poin penting di bidang kesehatan yang menjadi perhatian Pak Prabowo nah ini kita harus sesuaikan. Semuanya kalau bicara di SDM, kalau bicara SDM yang bilang sudah cukup, tapi tidak mencukupi kenapa? Mereka menumpuk di kota-kota besar. Nah ini juga kita harus perhatikan supaya ada pemerataan, penempatan SDM ya di berbagai pelosok. Kemudian kalau bicara juga yang infrastruktur, kami inginkan harus sesuai dengan permintaan, kebutuhan dari masyarakat yang membutuhkan di daerah itu sendiri. Furthermore, Feli Estelita stated Commission 9 will also focus on addressing the tuberculosis cases that have recently increased in several regions. Bunny and Risky, TVR Parliament, report. To increase participation in Social Security Agency for Employment or BPJS Ketenaga Kerjaan, Commission 9 of the House is calling for informal sector workers to be included in the program. The government aimed to enroll 61 million workers in the BPJS Ketenaga Kerjaan program by 2025. However, the increase in layoffs presents a challenge to reach that target. Therefore, to maximize participation in BPJS Ketenaga Kerjaan, member of Commission 9 Obon Tabroni encourages informal professions such as online motorcycle taxi drivers to enroll BPJS Ketenaga Kerjaan to ensure they have health coverage and protection against work-related accidents. Salah satunya adalah ojek-ojek online. Itu pun dengan mekanisme yang ada harus menjadi peserta karena mereka kan beresiko tinggi. Siapa yang membayar iuran? Jangan diserahkan kepada ojek online toh. Tapi karena ada hubungan kerjanya apapun, ada tanggung jawab dari perusahaan untuk juga mengiur. Sehingga ketika terjadi kecelakaan pada sahabat-sahabat kita ojek online, mereka itu terkaper. Dan itu jumlahnya itu sangat banyak. Sehingga tadi konsep untuk bagaimana BPJS penambahan kepesertaan, lewat formal dan informal itu tercover. Furthermore, Obon aided other informal workers such as factory workers must also be registered in BPJS Ketenaga Kerjaan. This refers to law number 24 of 2011 concerning BPJS stating companies that do not register their workers and fail to pay BPJS Ketenaga Kerjaan contributions will face administrative sanctions, fines, and limitations on health insurance services. Ferdian and Yoga, TVR Parliament, report. We still have more interesting information. Stay tuned right here, only on House News. Marina Development Indonesia and Pelindo have announced plans to develop a super yacht marina at the Bali Maritime Tourism Hub. This effort is designed to elevate the region to a leading Southeast Asia yacht charter destination. A new super yacht marina is set to open in Bali, Indonesia after an agreement between Marina Development Indonesia and Pelindo. The facility will accommodate up to 180 yachts, including 50 berths for vessels between 24 and 90 meters. Indonesia's distinctive location, safely positioned outside hurricane and typhoon path, combined with spectacular diving locations and favorable weather all year long, makes it ideal location for such a development. This marina will attract global yachting enthusiasts and open up for exploring Indonesia's natural beauty. Located in the Bali Maritime Tourism Hub in Benoa, just 15 minutes from the airport, Benoa is one of Bali's most loved and affordable resort destinations. The marina will not only attract international yacht owners but also provide an exceptional home base for domestic vessels, contributing to the growth of Indonesia's tourism and economic sectors. The marina is expected to generate employment and stimulate local economies. Construction is already underway, with the first dock expected to open by July 2025. The marina is set to reach full yacht capacity. Turning Bali into a luxury maritime destination will enhance its attraction. In 2024, Bali welcomed more than 7 million tourists, 20% increase in international visitors compared to last year. 
the island offers beautiful beaches along with stunning landscapes. Its cultural heritage is highlighted by historic temples, while Ubud showcases vibrant art and wellness spots for relaxation. The nightlife in Seminyak and Legian is lively complemented by a diverse food scene. There is good news for anime lovers in Indonesia. The officially One Piece Cafe will be open in Jakarta. This cafe is the first in Asia that is officially dedicated to the One Piece franchise. Here, you can enjoy innovative, diverse, aromatic, and delicious dishes. Taken from Tempo, the interior of the One Piece Cafe in Jakarta will transport visitors to the world of pirate adventures led by Monkey Diluvi. When you enter the cafe, you will feel an atmosphere of the Straw Hat Pirates' adventures. From pirate ship decorations to iconic islands such as Fishman Island, every corner of this cafe is designed to bring the sensation of sailing with Luffy and his friends. Moreover, the cafe walls are decorated with images of favorite characters like Zoro, Nami, Sanji, and Chopper. Several interesting photo spots are also provided for visitors who want to capture moments with replicas of Going Merry or a Thousand Sunny. The main attraction of the One Piece Cafe is food and beverages menu directly inspired by the characters in the One Piece series. One of the showcase signature dishes is Luffy's bone in meat. As often seen in the anime, Luffy is known for his love of meat and this dish is designed to satisfy the visitor's meat cravings. The meat is perfectly seasoned with rich flavors. Visitors can also try Sanji Soba, a dish inspired by a scene in Wano Country where Sanji disguised himself as a soba vendor. This menu combines soft noodle texture and savory broth. The dish is served with an elegant presentation in the style of Sanji, the straw hat pirate chef. For dessert, there is Big Mom's Wedding Cake, a dessert prepared by Sanji and pudding in the whole cake island storyline. Tourism trends are changing, especially after the COVID-19 pandemic. This year, travelers focus on mindful and meaningful experience instead of busy schedules moving away from traditional travel concepts. Tourism trends in 2024 make tourists take mindful, memorable, meaningful, and quality trips. Tourists seek new experience and abandon conventional travel concepts. Leisure is the mixing of travel for business and pleasure. This trend has been growing since 2017 but really gained traction in 2023. In fact, it's becoming so popular that leisure is soon expected to overtake business travel. One in three business travelers will integrate a holiday or leisure aspect to their business trip. Leisure travelers tend not to change their accommodation, choosing to stay in one place. Travelers place a high priority on wellness-focused activities with rest and relaxation being equally important to adventure and discovery. Holidays that combine adventure alongside well-being activity, such as yoga or meditation retreats or culinary-themed trips are going big in 2024. The slow travel movement is gaining popularity as travelers recognize the benefits of taking their time. Instead of rushing through many destinations, more people are choosing for longer stays to enjoy themselves in local cultures and environments. Travelers are seeking meaningful experiences that help them to connect with locals, explore nature, and reflect on their journeys. More travelers are now using TV shows and movies as inspiration for their trips. Over half of travelers have planned or booked a trip after seeing a destination featured on screen. In fact, travelers say TV shows influence their travel decisions more than Instagram, TikTok, and podcasts. Knowing as set jetting, this trend started booming during the pandemic when TV offered a virtual escape. Popular set jetting spots include Thailand from The White Lotus, Romania from Wednesday, South Korea from Squid Game, and Scotland from Outlander. And that's house news for today. Thank you for watching everyone and have a good day.